So good morning to you all, dear friends and students. Thank you for being here. We're delighted uh, for your presence at the fourth Global Pro Procurement Conference in beautiful Villa, Villa Mondragone, which I hope you will enjoy in these uh, two wonderful days. Um, I was thinking about the word mobile while uh, preparing for this very short introduction, and uh, it seems to me that we are living in a world that is quite different from the one we had imagined four years ago when we started with our first global procurement conference. It seems clear that countries and unions of countries find it growingly important to discuss uh, and defend their national interests. Sometimes, as we know, border and the protection is so. I was thinking maybe the word global is a little bit out of fashion and has lost a little bit of steam. And absolutely not for us. Absolutely not for us. Because I think that since the beginning, uh, we really wanted to use uh, the word global, um, not thinking, never thinking that the, the solution to the problems in public procurement would be solved necessarily by a global governance structure. Uh, but certainly we thought, and we still believe, that without looking at procurement in a global way, without a, what I call a, a global curiosity, we miss part of the picture of the solution also for our national and international needs in the realm of public procurement, which, as we always say, but people do not seem to necessarily always notice, generates every year one-fifth of the value added in economic terms of each single nation on average, and that obviously has momentous industrial and social implication in addition to that. So what do we do? Well, we share practices at the global level. We argue about them. We disagree, especially we disagree about their full, their partial, or their impossible application in any specific cultural and social context. Uh, and we want to do that through that debate that has always been very healthy, but at the same time tough and smart. And obviously that the only condition to achieve that is to have smart themes and interesting speakers. And uh, this is always what we have strived to do. Did we do it on our own? No. And so this is the time to remind you what's going to happen at the end of the conference. At the end of the conference, like every year, critical for us, you will be asked not to run away immediately, or if you run away almost immediately, please don't forget to do that at the last minute. We have a questionnaire. And the questionnaire is obviously a customer satisfaction questionnaire, but for us it's also very, there's a very important part called what do you want to see next year that we cover. So when we opened the, the questionnaire last year, at the end of the third Global Procurement Conference, there were a lot of people that were saying, we, don't, we do seem to have uh, little infrastructure in feeding. And a lot of people were saying that, so we adjusted. And so here's for you a, a Global Procurement Conference where issues of infra infrastructure investment, feeding, and all other types of requirements are uh, part, of the, part of the center. We have another rule, and then I basically go to thanking and closing. Uh, the rule we try to achieve at Global Procurement Conference is the rule of 33%. We are always very worried when it comes to university professors running the show, so we try to limit their presence. And so this is why we always want one third of professors, and that's enough, I can tell you, one, one third of consultants in the profession and one third of institution. And I was checking that uh, Annalisa has done a fantastic job in, in, in all, as usual, in, also in, in, that, in that regard. So let me come to the thanking, uh, to the thanking moment. Um, obviously, you are in one of the most beautiful university infrastructures of Italy. And uh, this has certainly nothing to do with my qualities. It has to do with the university that uh, is called the Ronto Vergata. So my thanks for all the support that we receive constantly over the master and over the organization of this event. It goes to my president, Professor Novelli, my dean, Professor Tubade, my director of the department, Professor Mattesini. But I cannot forget that all this uh, global perspective on procurement, uh, we started with a national perspective 15 years ago, it would have never been possible to create the International Master in Public Procurement Management to acquire this capacity to tap 
into countries where, like in Italy, capacity building was at the core of the needs would have been absolutely impossible without the support of the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development, which has been so far, uh, by far, the only partner that has uh, put uh, words into deeds and uh, has made this fantastic uh, uh, job of capacity building possible not only in Rome, uh, but uh, as we know in Belgrade and, and elsewhere. So my largest thanks before I give her the floor goes to Betsy Nelson for all the support we have received from the BRD and uh, we could not have imagined a, a better partner. Uh, Betsy knows as I do that that alliance started in that room there. It was approximately 10 years ago, a little bit more, that uh, Jack and I were sitting there looking at uh, this little town here that will never go away called Rome, and we said we have to do something momentous, not as the city of Rome, but almost, and Jack said, well, let's do it. And let me talk to uh, the heads of uh, EDID, the heads of EDID, listen, and uh, all of a sudden, uh, the program was created and all this incredible sharing of best practices uh, possible. So thank you to Jack. Thank you to my fantastic, incredible friend, Velko Sikivica, who could not be here today and that uh, we all wish he was here. So I don't know how it's going to work with pictures, for example, out of the many things. But, but not just that, because Velko did thousands of other things. I have a wonderful staff. I have Annalisa, who without her, this program would never be possible in, in such a high level of quality. Maria Cristina Cerri and Simona Rito work usually until uh, 8 p.m. They can be found in the, in the, in the building of the Faculty of Economics, not just for this conference. There's two great guys, Ariane and uh, Eduardo, and all the staff of the Secretary that I thank on your behalf. And so I close it here. I would like, it, it's wonderful to see this, uh, this room so full of people. I remind you that the, the typical structure of the conference, but for one session where we're going to have some innovation this year. But usually it's 30 minutes one speaker, 30 minutes the other speaker, 30 minutes for debate. If one speaker goes long, we interrupt it, it's not possible. If one speaker goes short, we keep those minutes for debates. And the debate part uh, is always one of the things that is most appreciated about this conference. So please just raise your hand quick questions and long debate, that's what makes Global Procurement Conference so strong. And now with great pride and uh, honor that she has accepted to be here opening, uh, my dearest friend, uh, Betsy Nelson from India. Thank you all for being here and have two wonderful days. Thank you. Good morning and welcome to Villa Bondragone. It is a stunning place, and I think, I hope, if you haven't started walking around taking photos, I'm sure you will over the next few days. So, first, a little bit of informality. Anyone that's wearing a jacket and tie that would like to, please take it off and roll your sleeves up. It's going to be warm, but there is no protocol. We can be a little less formal, especially given the weather. Um, so, please make yourself comfortable. The University of Rome Tor Vergata, together with the School of Economics, has been running this conference for four years, this being the fourth. And the goal of the conference is really to, as indicated by Gustavo, is to create dialogue. Because that is how we learn, it's how we grow, and it's how we keep challenging each other and improving the world of procurement. Our challenge that we hope to cover this year is actually looking at the two aspects of one, the decisions that are needed regarding purchase, what is purchased, how and for whom, but also the growing pressure for transparency um, and what is in the public domain. We've been very lucky, and I came in a bit late in the game after Jack and Gustavo and others created the graduate the master's program um, because I took over responsibility, amongst other things, for the procurement team. Um, I run risk management, I run the integrity area, and I also have the environment and social policy. So I have quite a wide range. All of these, we look at our projects. We have policies which we apply to everything we do to ensure that it's meeting the standards that we believe are essential for a fair and open process of procurement, for ensuring that we're encouraging the right behavior in our companies. So I think I'm very lucky. I've been adopted. Um, and I'm very pleased that the wider procurement team who also contribute every year to the program. As indicated by Gustavo, we have a really good mix of people actually speaking, 
um, and we have a wide range of topics. And what we really hope to have as a discussion is to really look at the innovation, competitiveness, sustainability, and regulation around procurement. And indeed, given our audience, we have a worldwide perspective. And each and every one of you will bring a different perspective. And it's all critical that we bring out each of those, because in that discussion, we learn from each other. We also this year are going to do something a bit extra, because the students of the seventh edition of the International Masters of Public Procurement Management program will conclude their four and a half months residential study. And tomorrow afternoon we'll be doing um, a certificate, giving everyone a certificate for attendance at the closing ceremony. But in anticipation of that, I'd like to say well done to the students. It is a tough program, and there's still more to come. The students will go back to their countries where they'll continue e-learning and internships and training on procurement. And then finally, they'll do research uh, and write a thesis, which they'll come back to Rome to present. And they will then be masters in procurement. As Gustavo indicated, we really do create this conference off the back of feedback that we get from the previous year's attendees. So to those that are here, thank you. Those that aren't, also thank you for helping to shape this year's program. We will have six sessions over the next two days, one looking at infrastructure of procurement issues, infrastructure implementation and risk management, and adjudication as a dispute resolution in the context of FIDIC requirements. The second area around transparency, procurement change through data and transparency considerations using meet criteria. And lastly, the actual initial part of the procuring process, pre-qualification, and considerations regarding sanctions and debarment. Our speakers are equally split, but the benefit of this conference only works is if every one of us contributes challenges, questions, and shares their views. So I wish you a very successful conference. Um, I look forward to two days of lively conversation and debate. And please take advantage while you're here, not just in the formal sessions, but in informal sessions, to build your networks, which are critical. And I think it's one of the biggest benefits we see from the students that go through the program is they create a network of people they can tap into in due course. So please learn and share with each other and enjoy the next two days. Thank you, and I wish you a very good conference.